I guess. Um, ben Sinclair here. I'm the developer of uh, the VR Museum of Fine Art. And a lot of you guys on the Vibe subreddit and elsewhere have been very excited about um, the upcoming release on Friday, but when you see this, it's probably out already. But anyway, I wanted to show off sort of my workflow as to how this works. Um, some models in the museum are from the British Museum, which means that they're pre-textured, they're pre-UV mapped. I mean, it's really easy to put in Unity and just drag and drop. But um, the British Museum certainly doesn't have everything. And on Sketchfab, you know, where things are textured and UV mapped, um, there's a really good chance that the model is not even licensed for download. So that's a problem. So you, um, a lot of the models in my museum are from my mini factory, which is a great uh, 3D printing repository. But the issue with um, these is that uh, they're, they are um, not UV mapped, they are not textured, they're just sculpts. They're triangulated meshes that do not have any data associated with them uh, in terms of how they'd be rendered in an engine, they usually just have normals and that's about it. So um, if that's okay, I could use things, things called triplanar shaders, which um, basically allow me to give it a texture no matter what the UV map is. But I like to bake ambient occlusion onto it, which um, if you don't know what baking ambient occlusion is, it's just um, pre-rendering a texture onto the model that sort of shows, um, the technical explanation is that it just shows where ambient light isn't hitting, you know, ambient occlusion. but um, Effectively, what it does is it um, is it puts darker pixels kind of in ridges and in places that are sort of recessed into the model, which kind of allows you to see the detail more. Especially when in VR you don't have much um, budget for uh, post processing effects like um, HBAO or or lots of spotlights everywhere that can show off the details. So things like baking ambient occlusion can really help. So here I've downloaded a bust of Minerva from the Vatican Museum uh, from my mini factory. Thanks guys, I got to credit them. And it's an STL format, which is really common for um, which is really common for uh, 3, 3D prints. So we have it here. As it loads in, this is the standard um, 3D viewer built into Windows 10, which is really cool. Um, you don't need to use Blender or anything right now just to view it. So it looks really nice, um, as you can see. Uh, no, no issues with the normals. Everything looks great. Um, so this is the model we're going to be doing for the tutorial, in this tutorial. But um, you will soon see that this is a problem. So let's open this thing up in Blender. So we'll do this by going to Blender. Um, and you cannot just open it in Blender. It's a bug. Um, you have to, you have to um, go to File, Import, in, um, STL. That's, that's how that works. So 31.7 megabytes. It's a pretty big file. So let's just Import that in. So, um, in I'm sorry for any bad video issues, but I'm working off of my laptop. I am touring Silicon Valley right now, so um, hence the the T-shirt. I'm not. I don't actually work at Intel, sadly. But um, yeah. So I'm on a laptop. Bad webcam. Bad microphone. Sorry if you guys can't hear this. Um, but and also I'll have to pause the video at certain times to uh, let the thing process because this laptop, while it's very nice, is not the it's not a supercomputer. So as we can see, the STL is quite large, so we're going to scale this down to more regional size. Um, the actual scaling to do it in one-to-one -one scale is done in Unity, so we don't, we don't have to worry about that right now. But I'm going to just center this roughly, and then I'm going to apply rotation scale and apply, um, apply, um, apply location. So that just puts the origin of the model right there. So, uh, this thing has uh, about 600,000 uh, polygons. So polygon-wise, it's not too bad for VR. But if you see, whoa, lag. Uh, sorry. If you see, let's just zoom in here real quick. Uh, you can see that this triangle is made up of hundreds of thousands of triangles. Um, this is usually indicative that it was made in like a, a, a sculpting program. And sculpting uh, makes triangles, but triangles aren't easily UV mapped. So what we have to do is we are going to go to our modifiers tab, and we're going to go remesh. So what remesh does is it rebuilds the whole mesh. It rebuilds the whole mesh using quads. Um, not well, not just quads. It actually reconstructs nice topology, makes a bunch of fun edge loops, makes everything really really friendly to UV map. Which is what we want. So we're going to do smooth mode. I'm going to do smooth. Sharp mode is interesting, but 
not for us right now. And then I'm going to put the octree depth to 9. I'm going to let that turn for a while. So this is going to take a couple seconds. And what this is doing is it's reconstructing the mesh with more UV friendly stuff. All right, here we go. That was pretty quick. So this is a UV, this is a reconstructed mesh which will be uh, much better to um, UV map. So you can see we have some nasty bits in here. Um, that's, that is just, that's just what happens when you remesh. So I'm going to try making the scale a little bit more. Sometimes that helps a little bit. Um, and then, let's see, did that help? A little bit. A little tiny bit. Anyway, so as you can see, there's errors here. Um, and these errors, they're okay. Uh, because what we're going to do later is we're actually going to uh, bake, bake normals over. So we're going to duplicate our mesh here. We're doing Shift D. This just makes a shallow duplication. And because this is such a massive model, it's going to take just a tiny bit to duplicate. There we go. And then we're just going to take the modifier off of one of these. So um, this one here is going to serve. Um, okay, this one here without the modifier, this is going to serve as our high poly or unremeshed, right? So th this one maintains all of the or original detail. So now we have our remesh. Let's call this remesh. And now we have to apply our modifier. So now. Um, It'll turn out, so that's basically changes it from a preview mode into, okay, we're actually writing this to the mesh data. All right, so now we have remesh, great. So now we're not done yet. Uh, now comes the long and tedious part of the computer, not for us. Uh, we have to let the computer auto UV this, which is going to be ugly, and it's going to take a long time. So I'm going to, I split the blender to two views, UV image editor, and I'm going to select all of our vertices here, and then go to shading and UVs, and smart UV project. Now. We're going to set the angle limit to about 50. It seems to be appropriate. If you, if you set it too low, what it does is it chops it up into way more islands, which means it takes longer. Um, but if you put it too high, it means it starts generating errors and warp stuff. And it's bad stuff. Island margin, 0 0.02 usually works. You just don't, you want a little bit of separation between the islands just so that everything works out well. And stretch final output, sure. Sometimes you don't want this, but in our case we do. So we're going to let this sit for a while. I'm going to uh, pause the video and then I'm going to come back to you.